In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the Monarch Social Follow shortcode, which allows you to place links to your social profiles and display follower accounts for each anywhere on your website that um, supports shortcodes, such as your posts and pages, or just about anywhere on your WordPress site. For example, here we have a post. And let's say at the bottom of this post, I'd like to invite my visitors to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and our other social profiles, and I'd like to follow up that request with a nice set of buttons to those social profiles that they can click on. If I'm able to give these buttons to my visitors, we're going to get a lot, uh, we're making it a lot easier for them to find us, and it's going to result in more follows. So this is a great example of a um, good use of the social follow shortcode. So first thing you're going to want to do is log into your WordPress dashboard, and then go to the Tools, Monarch Settings to bring up all the um, settings for the Monarch plugin. Since we're dealing with social follow and not social sharing, we're going to click on the social follow tab to reveal the various social follow settings, such as the shortcode settings, the widget settings, and first off, the network settings, which will determine which networks are displayed within any area of your site that uses the social follow system, such as the social follow shortcode. Basically, we need to tell Monarch what networks you use and what networks should be displayed within the shortcode. Now, I have a separate tutorial that really goes into detail about how to manage your networks because there's a lot of different settings here. So if you uh, need any more detail about any particular thing that I, that I skipped over here, be sure to check out that more in-depth tutorial. But for now, I'm going to give you a brief overview about how to add networks. So if you just installed um, Monarch, you're not going to have any networks yet. You're going to click the Add Network button to add them. And you have a window here with all the different networks that Monarch supports. So just click the ones that you use and that you'd like to promote and then press the Apply button. So you can see the networks that I've selected have been applied here. And you can drag and drop their order and change them as you like. Once the networks have been added and organized, you're going to want to fill in all the missing settings here. Um, first up, you can adjust the network name. If for whatever reason you want to change Facebook to something else, maybe you want to abbreviate it or make it all capitals, um, you're free to change that. <coughs> we give you that option. Next up is the URL to your social profile itself. So you want to, whenever, this is the, the, the URL, the link that the visitor will be taken to when they click the Facebook social button. And so in our case, our, uh, the link to our <coughs> Facebook profile is facebook.com slash elegant themes. But in your case, it'll be something different. You'll have a different URL, a different business name. So you want to enter that here. The next up is your, is your business name, and we use this to automatically get the share counts, or sorry, the follow counts from your social profile. So in our case, our business name is Elegant Themes. This is the, the name of our page. In your case, it'll be something different. In fact, for Facebook, it might not actually be a name. It might be a number because Facebook doesn't allow you to claim a, fa a page name until you have a certain amount of counts, uh, a certain amount of follows. So you might actually have a number instead of a name, and you can tell by looking at your Facebook uh, profile URL. So just go to your Facebook uh, business profile, take a look at the URL in your browser, and if it says something like facebook.com slash elegant themes slash one, two, three, four, five, six, a bunch of numbers, in that case, you, Facebook hasn't granted you a true page name yet, and so you're going to want to copy and paste those numbers and place them here instead. So that might apply to you. It might not. Just take a look at your profile URL. So Twitter, do the same thing. The link to our Twitter profile is twitter.com slash elegant themes. And then you can keep filling in uh, the profile for each. Now you can also input the follower count. So this will be the, this will this will determine the follower count that's displayed within the button below the icon and the network name. So in this case, our Twitter page has 19,500 followers. So I'd like to I'd input that there. And then the button will display that follower count, <coughs> give us a little social proof, show our visitors how popular we are, and it might encourage them to click our button and follow us as well. So you want to input the numbers that apply. Now you'll notice something's a little bit different about Facebook, right? There's no place to input a number. There's just a green check mark. That's telling you, all done, no reason to input a number here. We got it taken care of because Monarch can automatically contact Facebook and grab that account um, automatically. So luckily, some networks give us an API to do that. Other networks don't. And for those networks, like Twitter, Pinterest, and Google+, as you see here, 
you have to input that count um, manually and come in and update it as you see fit as your uh, follower count grows. Speaking of getting counts automatically, you can choose to do that or not here. So under display settings, you can choose to get counts via API. If I deselect that, and there's that green check mark goes away, and now I can input my um, Facebook follower count manually. Um, but if I, wanted to, if I want a Monarch to take care of that for me, I can click this, <coughs> and I get that green check mark again, so I don't have to bother uh, editing my follower count for Facebook. You can also choose to display the um, URL <coughs> in a new window when clicked. So you can, um, if you want people to go to your profiles in a new window so that they don't lose their place on your current page, you can select that or not. Next up are the API settings. Um, so just like Facebook, that they, they allow us to get that account automatically. Other, pro, uh, other networks do as well, but some of them require additional authentication, and those um, profiles are listed here, Vimeo, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And you'll have to go through some additional steps to authorize your website with those apps um, to allow us to grab those accounts automatically. <coughs> I'm not going to go into full detail here. As I said, we have another tutorial about API settings, so be sure to check that out. If you happen to be using any of these um, online profiles and you have the Get Counts via API selected, then you can authorize these <coughs> networks with your website and then we can grab those counts automatically, which makes, makes things a lot easier for you. Okay, so we've added our networks. I'm gonna save my changes and move on to this short code page. This is where we can generate a short code to display those networks anywhere on our website. So I click the short code link and here are all the different various settings we can use to configure our buttons. Now, before I go ahead and configure all these, I'm just gonna generate a short code with the default settings, and then after I've generated it, we can take a look at what that looks like and then start playing with the settings to see what those look like. So once you've configured your shortcode, or if you just can use the default settings, that's fine too, come down here and click the Generate Shortcode button, and it's gonna give you a shortcode that you can copy and paste and place anywhere on your website. <coughs> and wherever you paste this, those buttons, those networks are going to appear, and they're gonna appear as you have configured them here so let's see what that looks like. So here we have a post that I mentioned earlier, and I like to add those buttons at the very end. Okay, so I'm gonna edit my post, and within the text editor, I'm gonna scroll down, and right at the end, I'm gonna paste that short code that I just copied that Monarch just generated for us. I'm gonna update the page, and we can take a look at that. So scroll down, and there we go. Those buttons have been added and their appearance has been dictated by the settings that we used when that shortcode was generated. Now if we go back to our shortcode page and we adjust these settings and generate a new shortcode, then we can display those networks with those new settings and it won't affect the other shortcode, which means you can generate new shortcodes with different settings and have networks um, <coughs> displayed differently on different parts of your website with unique shortcodes, which gives you a lot of freedom, it's nice. So let's adjust some of these settings and I'll show you what they do. First up is the icon style, which affects the hover animation. So as you hover over here, there's different styles and you can preview them right in the dashboard and find one that you like best and click it and that'll enable that <coughs> hover animation. Next up is the icon shape. So we have three choices, which is rectangle, rounded rectangle and circle. Right now I have the rounded rectangle enabled, but I could change that to circle. And if we generated a new shortcode based on those settings and add it to the post, I'm gonna add it right below the other one so you can get a look at the difference. One will use our new settings with the rounded, with the rounded circle and one will use the old settings. All right, moving on to display settings. The icon placement, you can either choose to have the icon at the top or at the left, and you can also adjust the columns. So let's put the icon on the left and choose to have only two columns, and we'll see what that looks like. So I'm gonna generate a new shortcode and paste that in the page. And get rid of our old ones, so we should have the new shortcode. Refresh, so here we go. I have changed it to use two columns <coughs> and the icon is now on the left 
instead of being on top of the network name. All right, let's change it up some more. I'm going to go back to my rounded rectangle. And then down here, the next setting is whether or not you'd like to display or hide follower counts. Right now, we've chosen to display follower counts, but you can choose to disable follower counts if you like. You can also choose to enable or disable the total follower counts, which will tally up your total followers and place them um, above your icon. So we can enable that. And let's generate a new shortcode and check out what those settings have given us. I'm going to paste that shortcode here right into our post. Update, refresh. OK, so I've disabled the follower counts on the individual buttons. I've enabled the total follower count you can see here. I have changed it back to our rounded rectangles, and I'm using two columns. So that's the result. Next is the option to remove icon spacing. If we remove icon spacing, it's going to get rid of the, the spacing you see here, and all the buttons will touch. It'll make one big rounded rectangle block, which is a pretty cool effect. And um, whether or not it works for your website is up to you and your design. So you can, you can choose either of those settings. It's really an aesthetic choice that is entirely up to you. So, but let me give you a little preview of what that looks like. So I've removed icon spacing on this shortcode. And there you go. You can see all the buttons are touching. Finally, you can choose to hide on mobile devices. So if that's enabled, if you visit the page on a phone, you're not going to see those buttons. Those are going to be hidden. If you think they're, they're, they're taking up too much space, they're, they're too aggressive for the phone, the size of the screen of the phone, you can choose to disable them. All right, finally are the color settings. You can use these to change the background color, the background color on hover, the icon color, and the hover icon color. So if I were to enable custom colors and then choose a background color of red and a hover background color <coughs> of orange and generate that shortcode. It's going to input some color settings into the shortcode and adjust them accordingly. So we paste that into our page, update, and you can get a look at those custom colors here. There we go. They're red and orange on hover. All right, that's a basic overview of the follower shortcode. Again, that shortcode can be placed anywhere. It can be placed in a page or in a post. And so, yeah, go ahead and use that anywhere on your site. It's a great way to get more followers.